Hey, it's Lisfage from the future relative to when I made this video from your past and my present. Isn't time bad? Just a few quick things before the video starts. You can click here if you want to ignore this. One, hope you enjoy the video. Two, I'm sorry it's a little long. Most of my videos will be around the 10 to 15 minute mark, but I just had a lot of information to get out and I didn't want to cut the video in half. And finally, here is a table of contents. If you want to see something specific, just find it here and go to that time code. All right, thank you for listening. Hope you enjoy the video. Greetings, newly minted brown students. Hello, worried parents. And hello, people just taking a gander at this good old university. My name is Morgan. And on the internet, I am known as Liz Fage. And here, I am about to give you the rundown on all things brown town. It's also called Providence. This is a guide to all the lesser known facts that most people won't tell you, but you definitely need to know if you are considering going to Brown or if you are going to Brown right away. So let's start out with your packing list. I'm gonna admit all the obvious items, clothing, toiletries, a uh, water bottle, etc. And I'm gonna list the things you'll really wanna bring and don't think you do. First, a pan. Let me get my pan. A pan. Dining hall food is great, but eventually you and your friends will want to cook something and you will have no idea how powerful you will become if you're the friend with the pan. What if you want to make eggs? Get a pan. Doesn't really matter how good it is. This is not a very good pan, but you know, it's a pan. Number two, a fan. I know they rhyme. We'll move on. Providence is cold. You probably knew that when you applied to Brown, or if you're thinking about applying to Brown, you might not know that. Providence is cold. Usually, it's in the Northeast. It's a cold part of the, the world. The whole thing. Anyway, it's cold, but the first two weeks of school? No. They're not cold. You will realize that your whole body can just sweat all the time. That you will just be drenched in pain and heat. That you'll just like sweat through a shirt a day. Uh, this has happened to me. I've sweat through a shirt a day. And a fan won't fix it, but it will make you feel better. Because the rooms don't have AC. So, you know, get a fan, put it at the foot of your bed. It's nice. <laughs> Lastly, a curry or a water boiler. I know it sounds expensive, and I'm a low-income kid myself, but trust me, it really is worth it. There will be nights when you are studying, and you will need the last-minute caffeine boost, and everywhere will be closed, because it's three in the morning, and you should just get a Keurig, because then you can make some coffee in your room. I got one right over there. Sponsor me! Okay, let's get down to brown-specific stuff. Classes! Oh gee, the thing college is for. Huh. So, there's gonna be this thing called class registration. You're gonna be stressed. You're gonna be worried that you won't get the classes you want. The system is gonna freeze. It'll crash. Your window might close. And it'll be okay. It's your first year. You have four whole years at Brown University. Eventually, you'll get the classes you want and need. You'll get them next year, champ, is my motto. We'll go with that. But if you really want that class, go to that class. Just go. No, that sounds counterintuitive. Go to the class anyway. Walk in, sit in front, talk to the professor after. Say, hey, really like your class. You mind if I just stick around for a while? And eventually you'll probably just be enrolled in the class. So that works out well. Just, just go. If you want the class, just go to the class. Also, if you're enrolled in Brown, you're probably an overachiever. You are allowed to take five classes a semester. Don't take five classes your first semester. I know several people who have, and they are miserable. The course load here is heavy. It's an Ivy League university. Take four classes, or even three classes your first semester. That's allowed, and it's okay. If you take four classes, remember, you can go down to three. It is okay to drop a class. There's no shame in that, and a lot of people do drop a class first semester here. It's hard. Also, readings! Ah! Readings! Books! You will be expected to read certain readings over the course of the semester. You do not have to do all of the readings you are expected to do over the course of the semester. I know that sounds kind of weird and 
it's lackadaisical, but professors don't expect you to. It is okay to miss uh, one, like, section of readings. It's fine. Just catch up on them later. It will be okay. Just try to do most of your readings. Last thing, credit hours. They don't exist. At most other universities, you're expected to take a certain number of hours of classes. At Brown, that is not true. You're simply expected to take a certain number of classes. You're expected to take 30 over your entire career. So, don't worry about credit hours. You don't have to calculate that. But, do worry about the amount of hours each class expects you to put into it. Some classes expect, like, 70 hours of reading or 70 hours of writing. And you should factor that into your considerations when you're actually picking out your classes. That information's in the syllabus. Check the syllabus. Read them. It's important. I didn't read a syllabus, then I missed something important. Okay, class is over. Woo! Fun stuff now. Ooh, ooh, ooh! I want to join one million clubs! No, don't do that. Don't. Two. Two, you get two clubs! Anything more than that is insanity. You'll probably join three clubs. Or four clubs. Or five clubs! There are a lot of clubs here that are very cool. But over your first semester, go to some meetings, kind of whittle that down, and get to around two or three, just do an amount you can handle. You'll want to get involved here. It is easy to get involved here. But limit that. Be reasonable so you can actually have some fun. Art! Brown likes art. It's weird art. It's the same city H.P. Lovecraft wrote in. Art's weird! There is. Untitled Lamp Bear, a.k.a. Bluno. We all love Bluno. There's... Swirly Thing. Tree Rock. That's what it's called. Smish. Or Bridge Prop. The art's weird. That's the general plot of that section. There's some cool art around here. Go around. Look at it. Look, look, look at some art. What's the worst that could happen? Anyway, those last two arts are placed on the main green. This is where you will walk to your classes. You'll throw a frisbee and you'll see a dog. There's a lot of dogs here. It makes me happy. You can pet a dog. Be sure to ask. Just general etiquette. Ask to pet a dog. Got yelled at one time. F*** you, corgi dude. Also, this building. I will put it somewhere on the screen. That's health services. Remember this building. You are in an area where there are a lot of germs. You will get sick. Everyone gets sick. Everyone gets sick. Everyone, Everyone gets, gets sick. 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 Go to health services. Buy some NyQuil. Ah! Okay, now, where will you be staying? Let's talk about the dorms. Now, I'm a little impartial, because I'm in which is a very nice dorm. So, you know, college dorms are college dorms. Let's go through them. Number one, the Keeney Quadrangle. Most freshmen end up parked here, and most people also call it Key Nasty. Gets wild in Keeney, but it's a nice dorm. It's uh, kind of just standard cinder block walls, that kind of thing. It's a standard dorm, but it does get a little wild here, and it's kind of far away from some stuff. But it is close to the Ratty which is a dining hall we'll get to later. But if you enjoy a little excitement on the weekends, go to Keeney Asti. It's nice. It's fun. Champlin and Morris. Picture Keeney, but a little bit better. Just a little bit better. They're nice. They're a little bit nicer. They're a little bit closer to a lot of the services you want on campus. And they're just all around pleasant dorms. Uh, and they're also connected to the V-Dub, which we'll talk about later. Then, oh, New Pembroke. When I make my abode, it's real plush here. People will walk into New Pembroke and be like, man, it's really nice in New Pembroke. And they're right. It's the nicest dorm on campus. Uh, it's connected to Andrews Commons, which is incidentally the nicest dining hall on campus. So just kind of just kind of hope you get put in New Pembroke. I don't know. There's not much you can do about it. But New Pembroke is the nicest dorm. New Pembroke is the mo also the most recently renovated dorm, so everything here is kind of new and fresh. It's good. Okay, dining halls. Food. What you're really coming to school for. Not education, not erudition, not connections. The food. You're not. No one comes to Brown for the food. The thing I've heard complained about the most is the food, which I think is a little unjustified. I think the food here is actually pretty good, and I've had... I haven't had no problems with the food, but I'm usually pretty happy with what I eat. Let's head over 
to Sharp Refectory. We're here at Sharp Refectory. First things first, anyone who calls it Sharp Refectory is either an admin or an alien. No one calls it Sharp Refectory, we call it the Ratty. Because there were rats running around there in like 1910, which is no longer a problem. No more rats. No more rats in the ratty. Uh, edgy freshmen, like myself, also call it the rodent, which you can say to make upperclassmen mad. Uh, it's a buffet-style uh, eating hall. You just you swipe to get in, and then you can eat all you want. Uh, it's kind of loud. It's also the biggest dining hall, so of course it's kind of loud. Uh, but the food's good, uh, and you can find a quiet corner if you need to have a meeting. So, Next, the Werner Woolley Dining Hall, also called the V-Dub for V-W, uh, also called the Beetle for v V-W. No one calls it the Beetle. Don't call it the Beetle. It's um, buffet style. The food is a little bit better than the Rowdy, in my opinion, and it is also kind of like more home style. You got your uh, spaghetti, you got your uh, parmigiana, you got your... Uh, your ed edamame. Anyway, better than the ratty, you can get a decent cup of coffee here, and it's also a great place to study alone. They have a bar where you can just kind of set up and study, or like, watch a movie in public, and no one will bother you, and it's fine. But, it's never open! Why? The schedule is terrible! Seriously, the hours are absolutely insane. Whenever you want to go to the V-Dub, you will not be able to go to the V-Dub. You have to like, schedule a trip if you want to go to the V-Dub. And even if you do, you might not make it. Might just be closed. To be fair, the hours are posted online. They're just kind of really inconvenient. So, you'll just have to see how it fits in with your schedule. You might go to the V-Dub a lot more than you realize. Also, tables. The tables are all sticky for no reason all the time. But that doesn't really matter that much. It's like my second favorite dining hall and the chicken fingers on chicken finger Friday are... Uh, seriously. Best chicken fingers I have ever had are at the V-Dub. Moving swiftly onward to Andrews Commons, the best dining hall on campus. Don't at me! It's uh, really cool. It's an Asian fusion style uh, dining hall. So you get a lot of pho, you got uh, minban, all sorts of very good stuff. There's sushi, but it's a little expensive. It's probably the priciest of all the dining halls. Uh, but it's really good. And they have special events like Sunday Sundays, where they make Sundays on Sunday, which is it's the ice cream. You get it. They also serve pizza. They're the dining hall that has opened the latest. They serve pizza that they bake in-house until 2 in the morning. So if you are hungry and it is before 2 in the morning, feel free to head on down to Andrew's Commons. They also have private study rooms that people can use night and day. If you and your friends need somewhere to study and you also want to grab a bite to eat, head to Andrew's Commons. They also kind of only serve the same food all the time, but it's the best dining hall. Fight me! Before we move on to kind of the more d minor dining halls, just so you know, Sundays are kind of a weird day for dining halls on campus. Kind of nothing is open until Andrews at around 11 o'clock, so it can be good if you want to go out to eat. Just save that for, like, Sunday. Or the Blue Room. The Blue Room is also open on Sunday. Let's move to the Blue Room! The Blue Room serves coffee and muffins. You will spend a lot of money here and feel bad about it, but you can spend swipes here on the weekends. Josiah's! Everyone calls it Joe's. No one calls it Josiah's. You can get, like, burgers. Fries. Cheese sticks! You get it. You get greasy food here. There's a lot of drunk people here on the weekends, but it's very good. And then there's Baja's. Not technically a dining hall on campus. It is a restaurant on Thayer Street, but everyone goes to Baja's. It's Tex-Mex. Bellissimo! Okay, let's do libraries. They're great places, and you will for sure have a favorite library. The Rockefeller Library also simply called The Rock. Named after whom, you may ask? Rockefeller, the one really rich dude. Yeah, that one. There's a big picture of him in the lobby. Oh, this is the Humanities Library, so if you're doing any research into, like, ancient cultures, modern culture, culture, writing, 
Humanities. It's the Humanities Library. You just go to the rock. It's nice. There's a recording studio here, there's a tech studio here, and there are hundreds of little places where you can squirrel yourself away and study if you prefer to study in the total quiet. The Rockefeller Library is the place for you. The Sciences Library is one of the tallest buildings on campus. If you're a engineering major or a STEM major, something like that, you'll probably visit the Sciences Library eventually. Great place to study, very open. I don't really study there often. I'm a humanities major, but it's very welcoming to everyone, no matter what you're studying. And you can find a lot of sciences texts there and a lot of resources specifically to help like first year students and low income students. Great place. John K. Hey, Memorial Library. I don't know what this one looks like. They keep the old books there. If you're a classics major, you'll probably go to the John Hay. If you're any other person, you'll probably not go to the John Hay. It's where they store a lot of books that they're not currently using. So if you need it, I guess. Those were a lot of interesting things you talked about, but how do I get there? Transportation! Choo-choo! You'll probably walk. It's a small campus. You can walk where you need to go, but if you're going somewhere a little bit farther away, or if you're just tired or late, there are plenty of other ways to get there. Lime scooters. They're these little scooters that you can rent and just hop on for very cheap and drive where you need to go. But they're also scooters, and they're terrifying, and I don't like them very much, and they either get in the way of people on the sidewalk or get in the way of people in the road. Jump bikes. They're red bikes. You get on them, and you ride a bike. It's that easy. You unlock them with an app. I think it's free. I've never used one before. It's a bike. Use a bike. Good for the environment. Good for the environment. Lift. You will eventually need to go somewhere far away, and if you have a spare six dollars or some friends, you can just get a lift together. Uh, also, download the Venmo app. You'll eventually need it to pay off someone who has split a lift with you. Give them a dollar twenty-five, yo them. Or if someone just goes out and buys you groceries, it's very easy to just Venmo them. Everyone uses Venmo and Lyft. Sponsor me. Last one, the Brown University shuttle. Bus. They spelled bus. In all seriousness, people just call it the shuttle. It's a little red bus that drives around campus. You hop on, you wait for it to get close to where you need to go, you get off. It's free, as long as you have your ID. One thing I almost forgot is the actual bus. You get free public transport uh, with your brown ID. So if you need to go somewhere, just hop on a public bus, swipe your thingy, and go where you need to go. It's magical. Okay, let's talk about acronyms and fun names here at Brown University that you might eventually need to know. R-S-I-D. RISD, or Rhode Island School of Design. Brown's partner school who focuses on art. Uh, this is where all the art kids go. They dress real nice, and they're generally very nice. And you can take classes there if you have taken VizArts 100. Good luck! Everyone wants to take VizArts 100. Every single person. Uh-oh! You'll probably get it eventually. DPS. The Department of Public Safety. They're the campus cops. They are police officers that will break up parties if they get a little too rowdy, and you'll have to call them if you lose your key and need to get into your room. The conversation will go something like this. 911, what is your emergency? Um, so sorry, I think I have the wrong number. What's the issue? Um, I'm just uh, locked out of my dorm room. <laughs> Okay, we'll send someone over. It will be scary, but then it will be over and they'll send someone to come unlock your door. B-U-D-S. Buds. Brown University Dining Services. They are your friends. Literally, your friends probably will work for Buds and you might as well. It's a, a very good way to earn a living on campus and a lot of community members also work in Buds. Be nice to them. They make your food. Be nice to them. RPLs or Residential Peer Leaders. I had to Google that one. They're basically RAs, but not as mean, and they're not narcs. Most of them are pretty chill. P-L-M-E, or PLEME. Program in Liberal Medical Education. You'll hear this said by many pre-med students, I am PLEME. But for real, PLEMEs are nice and probably smarter than you or I, and they will let you know. Meekle Johns, they're your peer advisors. They will be happy to help, and they will be able to help. Just shoot them a text. 
Give them a call. Uh, they're named after an old rich dude. And they used to be called the Sphinx Club. Which is a much better name. Swipes. Food money. One swipe equals one meal. You will probably have enough of these, give or take a few. Points. This is like fake money that you can use to pay for things when you are out of swipes or a food item is worth more than a swipe, like sushi. You will not have enough of these. Fair bucks is just real money you have to put into the account to pay for laundry. Laundry is expensive. I'm just gonna wear like a compression suit next semester. And that's kinda it. Brown is a great school and I'm incredibly happy here. Of course there are problems, but it's a lot better than most places. I hope to see you on campus next year. This is Morgan and Lisphage signing off. Hey y'all, hope you enjoyed that video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and subscribe and follow on Twitch. All my other social media channels are linked in the description below. Is there something else you want me to talk about? Something I did wrong? Please don't forget to tell me in the comments below or just tweet at me. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.